All right there guys, how's it going? So, as I promised you this morning, here is my video on The Athletic podcast where they discussed a lot, it's basically all about Liverpool really, um, they talked about like the league run and who's going to replace Jurgen Klopp. So, I'll put a description, I'll put a description, I'll put a link in the description below so you can go give it a watch yourself. Um, but yeah, this is all the stuff I've took out of it in regards to the managerial hiring process that they're going through right now. So, this is all basically from David Ornstein as well, and to some of you that have just come across this video now, Ornstein is one of the journalists that you should be paying attention to when it comes to anything football related, basically, but definitely like Liverpool as well. So, Will Spearman, who is like the head of the data and analytics side of Liverpool, is going to be key to this decision making. Data and analytics will be key, just like when we made player signings. So, in the past, when Edwards and Julian Ward was like the sporting director and we saw Liverpool go for a few players and we kind of thought, who the hell are they? Um, and it was all down to like data, like say Mo Salah and Sadio Mane were both data-led um, signings. They're going to do the same thing with the manager as well, basically, guys. Um, it won't be a figurehead, so a big name uh, like Klopp. Klopp had more power after Edwards left. And they want someone that's going to come in and be more of like a head coach and someone who will work well with a sporting director. It was mentioned also that Klopp was initially up for working with a sporting director, but then with success, he gained more power. And FSG want to kind of bring somebody in who's not going to have as much power as Klopp has had over the past few years, guys, in regards to the ongoings at the club. Ornstein also said that De Zerbe is unlikely to be the new manager because of how hard he can be to work with off the pitch, so behind the scenes, um, which is, you know, again, linking back up to the thing before and regarding a figurehead, FSG wants somebody who's going to basically do what they're told, do you know what I mean, and work with the sporting director. Amarim is in the mix. Uh, he has a strength and conditioning coach who works with him. And he used to work at Liverpool as well, did this coach. And he is important to how Amarim judges whether if players can play or not, which I think would be really good for us to have now of all the injuries we've been having. And maybe him leaving is the reason why we've had all these injuries lately. <laughs> um, conversations have taken place, but Amarim isn't the standout candidate yet because there isn't one yet due to the process. So... It does make sense if they're just kind of going with it, with the um, data and everything like that. But you would think at the same time, I, the way I'm taking that is, Ornstein will know more than he's letting on. But Liverpool would have said, you can only say so much because can you imagine if Ornstein starts coming out and saying like, oh yeah, like Amarim's the guy for Liverpool. They only want him. They don't want nobody else. That's going to make negotiations with Amarim himself a little bit more difficult because maybe he'll start wanting more money. Maybe he'll start wanting more power in regards to, like, you know, I don't want to work with a sporting director so, as much anymore. Like, you know, you guys say you only want me, so give me the power. That's what I want type thing. He has also said that there is a 10 million euro release clause for Amarim and he seems to be sticking with this number. This is something he said... In February, I think, regards to Amarim. But we have seen a lot of other journalists with numbers regard like 20 million euros, 15 million euros. They're all over the spectrum, really. But Ornstein is sticking with this like 10 million euro figure. Due to Richard Hughes's links with Italy, due to his like playing career and stuff, Thiago Motta and Inzaghi both score well on the data. Inzaghi's English is not good though, so that kind of rules him out a little bit. Motta has a contract that's coming towards the end, and so does Fonseca. Both of them could be available in the summer without having to pay a release clause. The upcoming days ahead are important for Hughes to finalise his list for who the candidates and the contenders will be for the job. It will be a slow burner because most of the leading candidates are in jobs. So that kind of goes against what he said about Amarim earlier when he was like, yeah, he's one of them, but he's not the standout. So basically, guys, he's, he's meant on to mention how when Liverpool were replacing Brendan Rodgers, uh, Klopp and Anschlotter, who were the two top candidates, were both just 
available so it could be done pretty much straight away but with people like Amarim for instance who's in a contract and he's in a league battle and a cup battle with Benfica and Porto he's got a bit of a big job ahead of him and he doesn't want to leave on a bit of a downer so it could be before you know late May well early May late what April when we start hearing things in regards to who's going to be the new manager of Liverpool it's a big moment for Hughes due to the public expectation that it was going to be Alonso's job and anyone else who comes in will be second best. The club cannot think this way because they need to get the best man for the job, which is goes without saying. I, I agree with that. You can't get stuck in the mud um, thinking, oh, well, we've missed out on Alonso. It doesn't matter who we get now because the fans will never be happy. Contracts still need sorting out for Trent, Van Dijk and Salah. There's been no progress as of yet. And then lastly, guys, they touched on some data that Sky Sports ran with. And it was one of the algorithms that showed who would be the best in terms of a clock 2.0. And they've come up with four names here. Uh, number one was Sebastian Hernes at Stuttgart. He was number one, and he would probably be the biggest name coming out of Germany right now, managerial-wise, if it wasn't for the job that Alonso's done. Because I think that Stuttgart were like fighting relegation last year, and they're now basically fighting for the Champions League. I think they're either third or fourth in the Bundesliga. Uh, number two was Marco Rosa at Leipzig. Three was Erdin Terdic at Dortmund. And fourth, guys, and this one made me laugh, was Michael Carrick at Middlesbrough. Apparently, they would be the four <laughs> that would be the best replacements as like a, a straight swap for Klopp, apparently, in regards to one of the algorithms used in the data. So let's hope they don't just go with that one, eh? Because um, I don't know how you'd feel, but I don't think I'd be too happy with uh, Michael Carrick rocking up to be the Liverpool manager, I tell you now. So, guys, that's basically all the notes I took down that I thought were quite important to the Liverpool managerial thing. Um the link's in the description below if you want to go give it a little bit of a look to yourself and see what you think of it all. Let me know down in the comments below, guys. Have you Do you feel any more confident in regards to the process that Liverpool are doing? Do you like how they're going about it? Any of the names I've mentioned, are they a shout-out to you other than just Amarim? Let me know, guys, down below in the comments, and I'll catch you next time.